Welcome back to the Bobby Starbucks Show. Having a great time in Fresno, California, CBC Studio B. Coca-Cola Broadcasting. We're enjoying an entertainment beverage. It's a Coca-Cola and a smile. And if you recognize that song, California On My Mind, that's Cashman and West, ABC record recording artist. And now on the phone. Hey, Rob. How are you, buddy? Doing great. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I know you're doing great is because we are on the cusp of another baseball season, and you could probably cue up your song, your baseball ballad opening day, pretty soon. Yeah, that's a lot of play this time of year. Yes, it does. Hey, what about those Mets? Uh, you know, listen, in Fresno, California, we're like we're like Flushing West here because of Tom Seaver and Bobby Jones. We have a real affinity. All the Fresno residents in uh, Fresno, California, have a real affinity for the Mets. So. I'm glad to see Cespedes signed again. I like the direction the Mets are going. You have a, just a really stellar stable of pitchers, young pitchers. You look like you could be a team to uh, be reckoned with this year. Well, I think they'll be reckoned with this year and for the next couple of years at least. Um, it's, it's rare that you uh, come up with uh, four or five young pitchers you know, who have the ability that these guys do, and I think they're only, you know, you know you're going to have your injury here and there, but I think uh, these guys are so strong that uh, they'll, they'll give the Mets, you know, a chance to win every game. And now they've put together a decent lineup, you know, with Cespedes is batting third, and hopefully David Wright will come back to somewhere near what he used to be. And uh, I think they did a very good job, you know, although uh, – Cabrera at shortstop and um, and Walker at second base. You know, it's not uh, not A. Rod in his prime and Ryan Sandberg, but uh, they're two really you know players that you can count on. You know, they're they're yeah. going to hit hit some and they're going to feel their positions. And um, although, you know, as I said, they're not spectacular, but I think they'll they'll do the job up the middle. I was going to say, the, yeah, the Mets are... something they were missing last year. Was Murphy at second base probably lost three or four games for the Mets. Yeah, but tell me, he didn't make a name for himself in the playoffs. Outstanding. He had one of those streaks that, uh, you know, is, is rare. I mean, you know, he's not a power hitter. He's never, you know, hit more than 15 home runs in a season. And uh, he just got on one of those streaks where uh, they were throwing the ball where he could hit it, and when he got his pitch, he hit it out. You know, I remember when George Brett was making a run at 400, batting 400 all those years ago, somebody asked him, said, what's the difference? He says, the ball looks like a grapefruit. I don't know, it's just it feels right. Yeah, and, that happens. You know, you know it really does. In fact, your, your pitching staff for the Mets, I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking back to the days of the uh, – Baltimore Orioles, when they had four 20-game winners, those amazing stallions. Uh, yeah, and, and this is it. Pitching wins championships. So the Mets could be could be in for a nice run this year. I know Phil Kernett and you will be uh, watching and listening and reading the uh, daily news on a daily basis uh, following your beloved Mets. Yep, hoping, hoping for the best. Nice. Hey, talk about, remember when... Uh, we put that deal together in San Francisco, and your lovely wife, uh, Laura, came out, and you performed at in San Francisco in front of 43,000 fans, and there was Willie Mays and Monty Irvin, and uh, Barry Bonds was still part of the team. There's Barry Bonds on the dugout steps. There's Willie Mays in front of the wood letters from the polo grounds. You're singing the catch, and Willie Mays is tearing up. Tell me, you didn't have chills. Well, that was one of the you know great thrills of my life. Uh, I was a fan of the Giants, of course. Uh, and in 1954, I was 13 years old, so I was you know a huge baseball fan, and uh, Willie was my favorite player. So to get a chance to uh, you know spend time with with all those guys and see them enjoy the song so much, uh, that was a, it. Was a real thrill, and uh, you know very very. Uh, Emotional and touching, as you say. You know, right now we have a photograph of you up on the screen. Uh, it was taken when you were singing at uh, the then Shea Stadium. I believe that was the night with the flag and Mike Piazza. And didn't you pen a song uh, based on that night? Yeah, it's, um, it's, I think, 
you know, one of my best songs. Uh, I think I captured that whole event. Uh, I was watching it on TV. I wasn't at the game, uh, but it was such a touching moment, and I started crying when Piazza hit that home run because I really, I knew instantly what it, what it meant. You know, it uh, was a, a week after the attacks on the on the trade center, and I I knew what everybody was feeling, and everybody, including me, lost friends in that uh, that horror. And um, Piazza's home run really said, "Okay, that's over. We have to go on with life and uh, and uh, do the best we can." And, and and try to make things better. And it was really important. It's amazing how uh, that home run by Piazza is, is remembered more than any of his other big hits, and he had plenty of them. And now Mike's headed to a place where you reside, the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's in a little more hallowed place than I am, but, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, He's going to be inducted this this summer, and the Mets are going to do some some big things for him. And uh, it's great. He was a, he was a great great player, one of the greatest hitting catchers of all, of all time, and uh, gave Mets fans a lot of thrills. Well, we're talking with Terry Cashman, uh, singer songwriter, the Balladeer of baseball. Terry Cashman. He's also a record producer, uh, produced, co-produced with uh, Tommy West, the recordings of the late great Jim Croce, and also uh, one half of the uh, incredible duo Cashman and West. So the very talented Terry Cashman from New York. Um, talk about after your music days with Cashman and West, and maybe uh, shedding some tears over the loss of Jim and Maury. The moment when you went to that old timers game, and you saw that photograph. And then you realized what had to happen. You sat down and out came talking baseball, Willie Mickey and the Duke. Can you talk about the genesis of that? Yeah, as you say, it was uh, from an, an old time uh, game in, at Shea Stadium in, uh, I think it was 1980. And uh, some brilliant photographer had, had, had the... Uh, was either in the right place at the right time or brought this out, and he took a picture of Willie Mickey, the Duke, and Joe DiMaggio walking in from center field, and he took the picture from behind them so that you just saw their numbers, uh, 24, 7, 4, and 5. And it just presented, you know, 30 years, 20, when well, DiMaggio came up in 36, so 20, 20 something years of baseball in New York City with the, all those great center fielders um, playing for the Dodgers, Yankees, and Giants. And um, if you saw that picture and you knew anything about baseball and baseball in New York City, it uh, it spoke to you. I mean, it just, you know, you couldn't, you know, words were hard to, uh, to come by. But uh, to me, one day I looked at it and I said, you know, there's a song here someplace. And when I realized that Joe DiMaggio had retired in 1951 and all the arguments on the street corners were about Willie Mickey and the Duke, the minute I, I, I said that to myself, I knew that that was the song. And I went to bed that night thinking about, uh, you know, being a kid in the 50s and going down uh, to the corner candy store and uh, hearing everybody talking about politics and everything else, but mostly about baseball and who, who was better, you know, Musial or, or, uh, or Williams or DiMaggio or Musial or Campy or Yogi. And the biggest argument was, you know, who was the best, Willie, Mickey, or the Duke? And naturally, if you're a Giants fan, you thought Willie, and Yankee fan thought Mickey, and Dodger fan thought Duke, so <laughs> he had good arguments because they were, they were all, they were all great in those in those days. And uh, I woke up the next morning, and I wrote the song in twenty minutes. My goodness, twenty minutes talking baseball, Willie, Mickey, and the Duke. It's a standard. It's a it's a baseball anthem, didn't it, uh, Terry? Well, I'm um, you know I'm 
I'm really glad, you know, when the Hall of Fame honored it, uh, you know, there's only there are only two songs on it. Uh, one of them is is Willie Mickey and the Duke, and the other is, is Santa Field by John Fogarty. And so, to be uh, in that class of uh, of musician and songwriter is a, a great honor for me. And to be in the Hall of Fame, of course, is a great honor. And that was one of the uh, really great days of of, of my life. Um, they had me come up and sing the song, and uh, uh, I got a tremendous uh, reception from all the Hall of Famers, especially uh, guys like Robin Yount and, and Ryan Sandberg, and uh, nice. someone you wouldn't you wouldn't expect uh, yeah. who was incredibly nice to me and uh, had a bad reputation, but uh, not that day. Uh, Ricky Henderson was absolutely fabulous. My. Uh, and um, so I'll, you know, always, always remember that day, and uh, and I'm I'm glad I was able to to capture that that time in the song. You know, it was a special time of having, you know, those three players all play the same position for three teams in one city, and uh, you know, I was I was able to capture that 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 time, and um, I'm very grateful for that. Well, those three stars lined it up, and your star wrote it down. That was a beautiful song, and it'll last forever. That's, uh, you know, Cooperstown. But you know what? I want to thank you for uh, taking time out of your evening in New York and uh, sharing your stories with us here in TV land in Fresno, California. Like I said, a lot of Mets fans here, so we'll be pulling for them. But, uh, Terry, thank you for uh, sharing your story with us. I have chills on my arms right now. Uh, thanks for having me, and good luck with the show. My pleasure. God bless you, Terry. You have a great day. Give uh, give Laura my best. All right, I will. I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye. That's a great Terry Cashman from New York City. Let's take a break. It's the Bobby Starbucks Show on Coca-Cola Broadcasting. Just call me Bobby Starbucks. I may be bruised, but I ain't weak. 